Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I quickly wanted to give thanks to God, first of all, that I am able to stand up here today for His grace and His mercy and His love. Because only by that can we stand up here and preach His message. And with this sermon, first off, I would like to ask us a question. One question that I asked myself this past month. What do we do? Why do we do the things we do in church? Why do we come to church? What do we seek when we come to church? I believe that the answer for most of us is because we want to seek Jesus. We want to see Jesus. We want to get every chance we, get, we can get to see him. We want even just a tiny glimpse of him if that's all that we can get. Now I'd like for us to open to Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, where we will see someone with similar desires. Luke 19, verse 1 through 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich, and he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who was a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and he said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. A very great passage with many messages you can take from it. Now Zacchaeus, he was a tax collector, not only a tax collector, but a chief tax collector. And it's very strange because when you hear people who are in leadership, people that are chiefs of certain matters, they're usually someone who is taller, who has authority, who has something that they can give worth. But Zacchaeus, he was small in stature. The only small leaders you see in history are those that had a natural talent of leadership. But otherwise, tallness goes into the fact of seeing authority. Even an example in the Bible, when people saw Saul and they chose him as king, they saw that he was a head taller than everyone. He had authority and power in his words. He has, he has strength. And that's how they chose him as leadership. But Zacchaeus, he was small in stature. When you look at somebody tall, you don't want to mess with them. Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector, short. But they, they saw him, as, and they hated him for who he was. Now Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector, and that meant he was rich. Tax collectors were the richest people in their cities when it came to regular people because they would take money for themselves. They would steal. First, they would give to the Romans, but then they would take some for themselves. People all knew who Zacchaeus was in town, and they all despised him. They strongly disliked him. Zacchaeus knew that people hated him. He was aware of that. And I'm assuming that Zacchaeus wanted to see and hear Jesus because he heard that Jesus has this message of love, and all he got was hate from people. All he got was hate from people because all they saw him was as a tax collector. But Jesus showed love to all. And I know that Zacchaeus wanted to seek some of that. He did not see over the people because of his stature. So what did he do? He ran ahead and he climbed up a tree for the Lord he wanted to see. 
I've seen these pictures of sycamore trees in Israel, and they are very climbable trees, but they are very full of leaves and branches. And I don't think that he showed everyone that he was up there. As someone who is in high status, a chief tax collector, climbing up a tree, I believe that he would have been up there hiding behind some leaves, because that's something I would do. I wouldn't want people to see me do that. That'd be something demeaning for me. But he had the strong desire to even catch one glimpse of Jesus if that's all that he could get. Jesus, when he was walking by, he didn't pass over him. He knew he was there, and he called out Zacchaeus by name. He said, come down that tree, and I don't believe that it was by accident. Jesus knew this was the will of God. He called Zacchaeus down. He told him to get down quickly, and that he was supposed to stay in his house that night. Zacchaeus had joy in his heart, and he quickly got down the tree. Zacchaeus already showed that he was willing to have Jesus come into his home just by joyfully coming down that tree. All the people started to grumble and say things about Jesus. Why is he dining with sinners? Why is he walking with them? Why is he talking with them? Zacchaeus told Jesus that he would give up half of his possessions and give it to the poor. And if he would have taken anything from anybody wrongly, he would give back fourfold. What Zacchaeus did was he gave up everything he had. Here we see a rich man giving up his possessions, what he had, and that is very hard to do. If we open up to Matthew 19, verses 21 through 24, we will see how hard it was for another man to do such things. Verses 21 through 24. Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go. Sell what you possess and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to the, his disciples, truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Here we see a rich young ruler has many possessions, and because of that, it's the one thing that is holding him back from coming to Christ. He wasn't willing to leave everything he had behind to follow Christ. But here we see in Luke in chapter 19 that Zacchaeus, he was willing to give up everything he had. Just to make up for it somehow, he wanted to prove that he was willing to go for Christ. And at this moment, when he said he would give everything up he had, he showed his genuine and sincere desire to come to Christ, to accept him into his house, and he showed this as a form of repentance. Jesus saw this and he said, truly I say to you, he declared that salvation has come into this man's house. Anyone who comes to Jesus and accepts him, they'll be saved. And in this, Jesus declared his mission. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now us, the church, I ask this question for myself. Are you lost? I asked myself, am I lost? I went through the same phase of asking myself so many questions. I know that we were all lost until we found Jesus. We all were lost in our sins. There's nothing in our nature that pulls us to God. Nothing. And it was by the Holy Spirit He led us to know Christ. The Holy Spirit called us, and we wanted at least even a glimpse of Christ, and that fascinated us, and it pulled us to him. We wanted the glimpse 
of joy that Christ gives in our lives when we have him in our lives. Again, I ask, what do we seek when we come to church? We go to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. We go to church events. We go to conferences. Why? We must have a desire to seek Christ. We go to all these events, but do we truly seek Christ? Do we accept him into our home? I started asking myself these very questions. Why do I do everything that I do? I know that I'm not good, I am sinful. I realize that the tree that I'm getting off in my life seemed like it was thousands of, thousands and upon thousands of feet up. It's like I couldn't see the ground beneath my feet. Jesus is calling us to come down the trees in our lives. To not hold on to the branches that we have in our lives, branches of religion, Branches of maybe businesses, whatever is holding us back. Coming down from that tree is the first step to show that we have at least a desire to come to Christ. If we have sin and guilt in our hearts, we must repent and make peace with others. We must forgive others what they've done to us and ask for forgiveness for things we have done wrong to others. And that shows our true faith and desire for Jesus to come into our hearts. If we get down from that tree and come to Jesus humbly and confess our wrongdoings and change, then the heavens will declare the salvation. That salvation has come into our hearts. That salvation is given to us by what Jesus did for us, not by what we do, but by him coming and dying on the cross for us. Not only in that, by, but by him raising on the third day, conquering death that sealed our internal salvation in him. He took the sins of the world upon himself. He took our sins. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. If you feel lost, dear friend, just know that Jesus is always calling. He doesn't skip over you. He calls you by name. He tells you to come down from the tree that you have in your life. No matter how hard the path is down that tree, no matter what kind of thorns may come on the way down, no matter how much times you get cut on the way down, by the time you get down and you f- ask for forgiveness, you accept Christ and you take him into your home, into your heart, he'll bind up your wounds. Just lay your burdens at his feet. Accept him into your heart. To finish, I'd like to say, let us as a church Learn to see Christ more and more every day. Come down the trees in our lives. Accept him into our hearts. Amen. Let us pray.